back to yellow. It was a normal day for the rides when Cynthia got a disturbing call from her credit union. Saying that there was some um, suspicious activity on my account and they asked if we were in the UK. They were here in San Antonio. Cynthia called her husband Joseph to see if he had been shopping online. When he said no it wasn't him, I like went into panic mode immediately like oh my god what's happened. Turns out 11 payments in the amounts of three and five hundred dollars were withdrawn from their checking account. Thieves used Cash App, a popular mobile service used to send money to snag a total of $4,000. The fraudulent activity happened over a four-day period, the money paid to the same merchant overseas. I was completely upset. The rights were angry that Baptist Federal Credit Union did not notify them sooner. If I go out and shop and I spend $500, they call him or me immediately. And we're several days into this, so it just, it blew my mind. How is it that we have 11 transactions, unauthorized transactions, and no one knows? Oh, okay. Good thing they had fraud protection, or so they thought. They reached out to Cash App and tried filing a claim with their credit union. Well, it's just been back and forth. No, it's the bank. No, it's Cash App. No, it's the bank. Not entirely surprised. Uh, it's a common tale now. Jason Meza with the Better Business Bureau says fraud connected to money transferring apps is on the rise in South Texas. He's seen cases where customers have lost $10,000 or more. It is something that's happening. We just advise that people really do their, their homework before going into a situation where they might be backed into a corner. He says to be sure to check out the policy of your financial institution before using third-party money transferring services like Cash App. The rights found out after the fact in an email from the president of their credit union that losses from use of third-party apps are not covered under fraud protection. We've been enrolled in fraud protection forever, and now that we need the fraud protection, nobody can help us. The rights say they immediately filed a police report and fought without success for a whole year to get their money back. Things changed after we got involved. The credit union has recently issued a credit for every fraudulent cash app transaction. In a statement, the credit union now says mobile payment services fraud is covered under their bond. I can't believe it. I could barely sleep last night. We met back up with the rights three weeks later to share the good news. The credit union says because their debit card was linked to their cash app, their fraud claim was handled as debit card fraud. We really yeah. appreciate it. We tried and tried to no avail. It didn't happen until you guys were involved. So thank you so much. Experts recommend linking a credit card versus a debit card to peer-to-peer -peer services like Cash App because they say it is easier to recover funds lost due to fraud. Jonathan, a few months ago, the court decision allowing schools to decide if they want to require all students and staff to wear masks might have triggered an uproar. But now that many districts have already moved to recommendations for masks rather than requirements, the decision that Governor Abbott can't prevent schools from deciding on a mandate is not causing much of a stir. I think at this point it's very inconsequential. I don't think that it's going to make a difference unless we have a big spike. Connie Carrington has an eighth grader in Northeast ISD. She's seen lax enforcement of mask policies in schools for a while now. If you are on campuses uh, that I know that have been mandated, um, it's pretty an even swap. Kids wear them, kids don't. Teachers wear them, teachers don't. I think it should be choice. Yvelle Christian feels the same way. She's the mother of a second grader in Northside ISD who faces some physical challenges. You know, at the very beginning, I was very pro-mask. And now in the light of so many different, you know, pieces of data out there that say that they are helpful, they're not helpful. I think at the end of the day, it's the choice of the family and what's best for their child. Governor Abbott's order prohibiting mask mandates in schools violates the Americans with Disabilities Act. A federal judge ruled yesterday now school districts can make their own rules. NEISD tells us in a statement, it's aware of the latest ruling and recognizes the legal wrangling will likely continue. With low case counts and vaccines now available to all school-aged children, we'll continue to make decisions with the safety of our students and staff in mind. Parents we talk to seem to agree on one thing. If you choose to mask your child, that's, that's your right. We may not have heard the last of this lengthy legal back and forth as the state is expected to appeal the court's decision. This is Susie Pina years ago, strong and independent. Susie survived COVID, but not without a fight. She and her father, Jesse, were hospitalized at the same time in August. 
Jesse did not make it. He died August 24th from a heart attack caused by COVID complications. Since then, Susie, who has COPD and arthritis, has been on a ventilator twice. To avoid a third time, doctors inserted this trach, a device to help oxygen flow more freely through the body. But now that she's back at home, the family can't get anyone to remove the trach despite having Medicare. The nurse has told us from her home health, her the from the office from her doctor's office told us to take her to the emergency room and just to tell them for them to remove it but they still won't remove it so what are we supposed to do to take her to the emergency room just to sit there for hours for tell them to tell us no the family says the respiratory therapist from Susie's former nursing facility said the trach would have to be removed and that skin had already begun to grow around it for the past several weeks her mom Linda and sister Jessica have been trying to maintain the trach the best they can so this is all the tubing that they've sent. This is the suctioning stuff that I have to suction her with. They it's been very hard for me and my daughter, Andy. Jessica, because we have to play nurse and we're not nurses. We don't know how to, when she starts choking, um, they try to teach my daughter, Jessica, how to mess with the machine and the tubing, but it's very hard. I'm scared. Linda says she's consistently called other doctors around New Braunfels and they are just told they can't remove it because they didn't insert it. As for the doctor who did insert it, he says he can't remove it either. We reached out to that doctor's office to see why. We were sent this statement from Christus Health. It says in part, quote, we will review this matter and follow up as appropriate, making sure that anyone who might need us is connected to the right provider and receive the care they need in the right setting. Linda says that care can't come soon enough. Somebody out there, please help us because we've already gone to too many people. We're, we're already tired of calling so many people and no one helps us. And for Susie, who has to sleep sitting up and can't do normal everyday tasks, Life just isn't the same. Do you envision what your life could be like if you didn't have the trach? All the time. 